uh, you know, honestly, uh, it, it's uh, sort of cliche, but uh, I want to say Nemkov. I think he's uh, he's champion for the reason. He's uh, he's a tough cat, and um, you know, he he's the guy to beat. He is the guy to beat the champion. Uh, I want to have the the light heavyweight belt, and after that, then uh, you know, clean up the rest of the tournament. And one more question, Phil: How has the stock market been treating you uh, ever since your last interview? Funny you should ask. I was just upstairs looking at it. You know, uh, you know, it's just been uh, big. I was probably over invested in big tech, and uh, obviously, I, I actually got my money out before it went crazy, crazy downward. Um, so now I'm actually looking into some other things to uh, invest in. Nate, go ahead. Uh, just going off of that, sir. What other things can you give us? Some good stock picks going forward. <laughs> Uh, so right now I'm also looking into um, uh, what exactly Biden's um, um, what's his plan he just announced earlier uh, and signed for. Uh, it's a 1.9 trillion dollar infrastructure bill. So I'm looking into uh, raw materials and um, what exactly is going to get done first and soonest, and um, kind of some small stuff, construction stuff that I might uh, invest in. Construction. Okay, interesting. But back to the fight on Instagram. You said, I hope you guys are ready. What should the viewers be ready to see on Friday night? That's the thing. I don't know. It's going to be crazy, though. It is going to be crazy. I can promise you that. Um, you know, uh, right now, uh, I know Nimkov, you, you, you know, when you, you get a, a, a you, you skate by with a win. And this time he's coming to make a, a, a statement that he is the rightful champion. And I am coming to say, no, you're not. And so, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely going to be uh, a very aggressive and exciting fight. Mike? Hey, Phil. Uh, so is this the perfect time for you guys to fight? You have the second longest active streak. Obviously, split decision didn't go your way last time. You said he's champion for a reason. Do you feel like everything lined up for this to be the perfect time for you guys to run this back? You feel it. That's why you would even ask a question. Because like, you <laughs> feel it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You feel that. You put it out there. I was already thinking it, but you felt it too. So you know it's real. You know what I mean? I felt it. You felt it. It's real. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I look back at that loss and I'm like, hey, you know, uh, I mean, I, I never wish I would lose, but at the same time, uh, I, I do feel like it adds a little bit more theatrics to this moment and, and how sweet it will be to win the belt back from uh, a very – excuse me, a very uh, close decision and in uh, such an amazing light heavyweight tournament. Cliche media question is my last one. More important to win this rematch or to get your belt back? It's, it's the same one. It's the same, it's the same fight. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, belt back. And then you can work towards that. That's, that's, that's a very dollars. emotional to me. That's an emotional question, and I, I'm very not emotional about fighting at all. It's it's a job, and I do it because it's fun. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm about uh, I'm about being a champion. Thanks, Phil. All right, Dylan. Hey there, Phil. Appreciate you making some time. Yeah, you bet. I just wanted to ask about the dialogue of this being part of a Grand Prix, and I've talked to a couple fighters who have captured both lineal championships and Grand Prix titles. And it seems like that Grand Prix title almost supersedes the divisional hardware in a certain regard. Is that a sentiment you share? Should you get the ideal outcome and end up winning this entire Grand Prix? Um, well, the last time I was in a light heavyweight tournament, that was more difficult than a five-round fight. So that That's for sure. That That's for certain. Um, so there's that. However, that is not this tournament. This tournament is for sure uh, absolute craziness. So, um, yes, take uh, beating Nemkov and, and winning the belt will be a special thing, a special moment, and I'll be extremely excited. But uh, this tournament is, uh, it has too many of the who's who's, and uh, this will be uh, one to be remembered. Alex? Hi, Phil. Um so you only fought once in 2020 and the last time you, you, you only fought once was in 2011. Um, I just wanted to know, um, 
if only fighting once had any effect on your mentality, on your um, physio- just any effect on you at all? Um, I don't, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't think so. Um, luckily for me, um, you know, I keep myself very active in the gym. Um, I don't think I ever was, my, my weight was never out of control. Um, I stay fairly close to weight. I don't even check weight. I just, I can look in the mirror and tell where I'm at pretty, pretty within a a pound or two. So, you know, I I keep my, I manage my weight well. I stay in the gym. I put on just a little bit of muscle and um, I'm just constantly cleaning up, uh, cleaning up my technique and and build new skills. So I don't, I don't feel like uh, I lost anything. I I might've, I might've actually uh, extended, extended my career. Uh, just by having uh, less damage, more technique, right? And, uh, you know, I, I just made the most out of 2020, which was a very uh, disappointing year for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. And I, I feel like I was blessed in the in the sense that I was able to turn that into a, a positive for myself. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. All right, Max. Hi, Phil. I'm Max Morales from MMA Pit. And you have this rematch with Nemkov and a chance of potential rematches with Anthony Johnson and Ryan Bade. That's something adding flavor to the Grand Prix or only the belts in mind for you? And this, is there some sort of uh, dream final for you? Um, yeah, you know, all of those matchups are, um, you know, all, the, all of those matchups are freaking awesome. Uh, I definitely want to... I am definitely motivated to avenge a loss, but in all things, I am just more motivated about winning uh, this tournament because it's, man, this is, uh, it has some of the who's who of the sport of the light heavyweight division. And, uh, you know, the, whoever wins this, the fans will go down and say, man, that guy is freaking awesome. You, you went head to head with all the, all the killers in this division. And given your career, with uh, thinking on a victory of, of, of these Grand Prix, what would you do with that belt? Would you would you pursue a, a double championship, or what would you be? What what would it be in your mind? Uh, what would be on my mind? Uh, probably a um, nice little family vacation trip to Legoland when it reopens. Um, you know, just just simple things. I'm a simple man. As far as fighting goes. Um, I've always been open to anything. Ronald? This is Ronald E. Smith from Getting Real. Phil, how you doing, man? Ready to get real. That's what I'm talking about, man. There I go. And as for yourself, five days ago, you posted on your Instagram, you said, don't sleep on me. And I feel that a lot of, in your career, people have slept on your name. So in this tournament, how what would it mean for you in this tournament to finally let people know who the real Phil Davis is? Uh, man, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a fun thing just to be able to come in with a little bit of shot value. Um, once upon a time, I didn't have as many, uh, skills in terms of striking and, uh, slowly over the years, I've been adding it into my, uh, arsenal and, you know, I don't know that it, 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 my my wrestling and grappling has always been one of those things like people know, like, do not let this fool take you down. Don't do it. Don't do it. And, and so I've been able to use that as leverage to threaten that and then, uh, you know, extend my striking. And, and now uh, I'm at a place where I can use my striking to set up my takedowns, my grappling and, and, and truthfully use all of it to, to find the place where my opponents are weakest and, um, I, I'm I'm a much much more well-rounded fighter um, than than probably most people know. But truthfully, I would much rather have my performance show that than than explain it to you. I'd rather just you know show you. And when it was all said and done, what would it mean for you personally to win the title? 
Uh, to win the title, man, you know that's what that's what you get in this game to do. That's what we. That's what it's all about. That's the that's the reason why. That's the why. Sam Oakley. Hi, Phil. Sam Oakley from MMA UK here. So you've mentioned in previous questions wanting to get that win back over Vadim Nemkov. I was wondering mm-hmm. that first fight factor into your mindset going into this weekend. Does it does it fuel your motivation that bit more to try and get this one back? Do you feel like you know him better and you have a better handle on him than you did when you went into the first fight? Or does that not really affect your mindset too much? Um, I think it's a mistake to to think that you know a guy or think you know what he's going to do or think you know how he's thinking. What where he, I I think I approach it almost as a brand new brand new fighter, brand new fight. Um because it it keeps me from falling into uh the trap of um underestimating him or, or thinking maybe he didn't improve here or he didn't improve there. No. I, I, I have a limited knowledge of what you like to do and what I think you'll, uh, your attack, your plan of attack will be. And, uh, my job is just to come at you with a blank slate and take in because a lot, especially with rematches, um, they tend to be completely different from the first ones. A lot of times, um, just because guys are kind of doing round six, you know, so uh or round four of the of the first fight and so i want to come in with a complete blank slate i kind of have an idea what you do but i'm 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 approaching it brand new uh that just allows me to um see see what's coming at me and make make adjustments based on what he's doing and not what i think he's going to do so i feel like feel like bellator recently as well as other promotions but it's been showcasing that it's a great MMA. It's not just in the UFC. You can find it all over the world, all different promotions. And this tournament with all of the legends, the former champions, the big names, and the newcomers, it's got a lot of eyes on the Bellator. Mm-hmm. It might not be that otherwise. So I just want to give your thoughts on that. Like, do you, do you feel some sort of obligation to showcase the Bellator brand and show people who may normally only watch the UFC that, hey, elite world-class MMA can be found in promotions all over the world. Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm always, uh, I'm always down to rep my team. Uh, you know, uh, I rep the Bellator banner. This is my family. And uh, yeah, absolutely. We have some of the, we have some of the best fighters in the world. Definitely the best light, light heavyweight division. Uh, this is the best light heavyweight tournament ever. All right. Last one here. Go ahead, Will. Hey, Phil. You've had an uh, amazing career so far, and it seems like in Bellator, the judges just haven't been very nice to you, and you've come out on the wrong end of three out of four split decisions, and a couple of them, the media thought that you did win. What can we expect to see out of you in the tournament to keep these judges from screwing you over again? Yeah, no, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really blame the judges. I never do. Um, judges got a tough job, man. They, they take a lot of punches and they can't throw any, <laughs> you know, it's, they got a tough job. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, is up to me to, uh, to end it in regulation or make such a one-sided, uh, fight that, uh, pretty much everybody knows who won. All right. Thanks for the time, Phil. Thank you, everybody.